Hi, and welcome to the webinar, Streams of Superior. My name is Ada C. Um, with the City of Superior Environmental Services. I'm going to present this webinar today. And the streams, um, the streams I'll be talking about this afternoon is the Pokegama River uh, along here to the left, the Billings Waterway, the Winter Waterway. And these are called waterways because um, they're not permanent streams, but they are, um, they do have some flow in parts of the year. Jackson Creek, Newton Creek, Namaji River, Bluff Creek here, Bear Creek, and Dutchman Creek. Um, and before I get started with the talking about the streams, I just want to discuss what a watershed is, because that's also important to streams. All streams have watersheds, and it's defined by the USGS as an area of land where all the water that falls into, um, that, that falls in it and drains off, it goes in the same place. So this is a visual image of it. Um, this is kind of the boundary of a watershed, and all the water that goes into the, this boundary falls into this river. And the boundary is defined by um, the topography of the land. So there's no set boundary of any watershed. So this is perhaps a little ridge. And when the water falls inside here, it goes to this river. But when it falls out, it would go to the southern watershed. And for us, everything eventually goes to Lake Superior. OK, so the first river is the po Pokegama River. Um, and this, um, this originates near Jay Cook State Park in Minnesota, so somewhere off along here, I suppose. And then it enters the Superior Municipal Forest along here and empties into the Pokegama Bay and then eventually in the St. Louis River. So the green part is the, the forest. And here's a river that flows into, here's a river in the city. The Pokegama River is an important spawning area um, for walleye, northern pike, and other species. And it also has a lot of red clay erosion, and oh, there's a lot of sediment in the river that eventually goes into the St. Louis River, and that also gets periodically dredged. And also the Pokegama Carnegie Wetlands are considered a uh, Lake Superior Basin Priority Site, and that just means it has a lot of um, it has a lot of rare plants in there that um, that makes it. Uh, a priority site. So wetlands are, are outside the city, somewhere before the forest. And these are just pictures. The left is a picture of a tributary of the river, and here's another view of the river. So Billings Waterway, um, it's not a permanent flowing stream, but uh, it but it, it's not a permanent flowing stream. It just flows through the Billings Park neighborhood. Um, and it's an intermittent stream with low flows and may resemble a series of wetlands. And also drains into the Bay of St. Louis River. And for this waterway, it receives a lot of runoff from parking lots, roadways, and roofs. It's a very um, residential area. So here's a picture of the stream. And this is the outline. Oops. The green is outline of the watershed for Billings Waterway. And down below here is the Pokegama. So it's just north of that. So 
So Winter Waterway is further north and it's named due to its proximity to Winter Waterway, or not Winter Waterway, Winter Street. Um, so it runs about a mile above ground through the heavily industrialized area of, of Superior and it drains into Tower Bay. And when it drains into Tower Bay, there's a gate that um, there that controls the flow of it. Um, the stream, the waterway, has uh, has an unknown quality and quantity. So um, this gate here is used to control the flow that goes into the bay. And much of the waterway is lined by rock riprap, seen in this picture. So that's just the rocks that stabilize the stream banks. And there's a lot of algal blooms that occur in the summer. And this is the diagram in green is the watershed of the winter waterway. And here's winter street. So Faxon Creek is approximately three miles long. And it's also, I believe, the only um, stream in, that's entirely within the city of Superior. Um, and it drains into wetlands near Tower and 39th Street. And it goes by wetlands of the Richard, and it, it drains the wetlands of the Richard Bond Municipal Airport. And also flows through the Northern Lights Elementary UWS and Superior High School, so it flows through a lot of heavily developed and residential areas of Superior. You can see this outline of the creek. So for the last half mile of it, it's channelized all completely underground, and it feeds into the Superior Bay near Barker's Island. And it also often floods in Central Park. So I think there is, like, um, it often floods in Central Park and there's currently an ongoing um, attempts to ameliorate that, the, the pipe that drains it, the pipe that leads to the underground portion right here in the image um, is not large enough to accommodate large heavy rain events. So there's efforts to enlarge it and better drain it, the creek. So Newton Creek is the next stream. This outline here. And the majority of flow comes from the refinery lagoons, in this image. And it empties into the hog island inlet. And since it, a lot of the flow comes from the refineries here, it is heavily polluted. And the Magic River is probably one of the more well-known streams of Superior. 40% um, of the drainage basin is in Wisconsin. And it flows in the narrow, in narrow, steep-sided valley when it enters the city. And it empties in Elwes Bay. The mouth of the river covers 90 acres and supports spawning beds of over 60 warm water fish species. So about 33% of the basin is covered in red clay. Um, so there's a lot of sediment in the river. 90% uh, of the fine sediment is due to the bluff erosion and slumping. Um, and a lot of sediment eventually ends up in Lake Superior. So I think about 75% of the sediment also eventually goes into Lake Superior. Now parts of the watershed have been reforested. Um, but the, the the they use when it was reforested it was reforested with deciduous trees and that might not be effective as 
that might not be as an effective sediment filter. In approximately 33,000 tons of the Madge sediment is dredged annually to maintain adequate depth for shipping traffic. So like the St. Louis River is also dredged to maintain the sediment levels of the stream. And there's also ongoing efforts to reduce the erosion and sedimentation of the Nemaja River. Okay, Bluff Creek is below the Nemaja River. It's an 18-mile stream and also flows into Alouez Bay. And it's a limited forgery fishery with many wetlands. It is usually dry, but can experience significant flows. The mouth is an important spawning area for um, various fish species. It also has lots of pollutants entering the creek from barnyards, rail yards, and agricultural runoff and septic contributions. And these are just images of the creek. It's under a um, railroad and this is the mouth of the creek. And the Bear Creek is just by the by Bluff Creek. And it originates in wetlands outside of the city. Um, it also feeds into Alouez Bay and it flows for 2.2 miles in the city. It's normally a shallow stream with variable and seasonal flows. It's uh, considered an intermittent stormwater one-off creek. The mouth of it is an important area for fish species. And um, it usually has poor to fair stream health. So not a lot of that was uh, determined by macro environment st studies. And there is low quality of those in the stream. And the image to the right is, um, shows you how variable the stream is during parts of the year where there could be no water. Okay, Dutchman Creek is um, it's a nine mile long tributary to Lake Superior. Uh, three miles are within the eastern border of Superior. And uh, it does have higher flow than other Superior streams. And the main water source is spring runoff and rain events. This is the municipal um, landfill, so Dutchman Creek flows by there, and it cuts through sand beaches before it becomes Lake Superior. Um, the mouth of the river is often covered in litter from bonfires or dumping when the landfill is closed. Since it's five beaches, there tends to be in the landfill. There tends to be a lot of um, human waste that ends up there, so avoid doing that. Since it, uh, the mouth of the river is also an important freshwater estuary for different uh, animal species and aquatic species. So the image here shows um, the mouth of the river and depending on the flow of it, it changes. It can change um, depending on the water that flows through the creek. So those were the creeks, or those were the streams of Superior, um, and this just shows you, again, the, diff the streams and their watersheds. So to the left is this combination of the Pokegama and the Billings Waterway. You see that it drains, all drains to 
the St. Louis River. Um, you can see that all the water that enters Superior eventually gets drained into one of these streams and eventually into the bays and Lake Superior. Um, and due to that, due to all the um, runoff that it receives, some parts of the water bodies around Superior are impaired. So you can see a lot of impaired water bodies. And Newton Creek itself is even an impaired water body. An impaired water body just means that it's too polluted or otherwise um, degraded to meet water quality standards. Okay, and to learn more about the streams, these are some resources. A lot of information comes from the City Superior Streams website. Um, and also, uh, for regional streams, there's the Lake Superior Streams website. And more information about in any type of water body for Wisconsin, you can look at the um, water search function of the DNR. So I'll show you what these look like. So the Superior Streams website looks like this. It's an interactive um, site where you can click on it and look at the information for the different waterways. See Newton Creek, click on it. And it shows the information on Newton Creek. Um, you can also access this, the Superior City Streams through the Lake Superior Streams website. Superior and the streams. But here is also a great um, resource for learning more about the regional streams around the community, uh, different um, activities and research that's going around with the streams of the area. And if you don't want to know more about streams of Wisconsin, you can use this function. And this is also where I got a lot of the maps that um, delineates that, that was in the presentation where, um, that shows the aerial image of the streams and where they are. I'll give an example of Newton Creek. And we're in Douglas County. And you can look at the information from there. It's a lot of information and monitoring projects. You can look up information on that and photos. Oops. And that is it for the Streams of Superior webinar, so thank you for joining.